Hi, and welcome back. This is a continuation of our series about plantar fasciitis, and what I'm going to do in this segment is show you some things that you can use to help and give you some guidance on what other things might be available for you. Rule number one of plantar fasciitis. No talking about Fight Club. Okay, just kidding. Rule number one is actually don't go barefoot. Most of us these days have wood or tile floors and your foot just takes a beating every time you take a step. All the weight of your body focused in one place. So, get yourself some shoes. I have some examples to show you in a minute. Avoid the things that make it worse, which seems like no duh, but avoid those things that are causing problems. If you are a runner and you want to continue running, you may want to go to either a sports medicine doctor or possibly a running specialty store so that they can help with your gait and they can get you in the right kinds of shoes. Many people need to have extra arch supports even in their athletic shoes and the kind that I prefer are the kind that are three quarter because they don't take up your entire shoe. These do put a little extra width in there so you may need to loosen up your shoes a bit or even go a half size larger or a little bit wider. When choosing arch supports they don't have to be expensive and they don't have to be fancy. You can get them pretty much anywhere. I like these because they're cute. And these. I find that the ones that have the gel pads in them uh, tend to lose support a little bit faster, so that's my two cents. So, while you're not going barefoot, what's okay to wear around the house? Well, you want to have things with a nice sole so that your foot doesn't absorb all that shock. The, foot can, the shoe can absorb it too. Something nice like a house shoe, or if you must wear flip-flops, don't wear the little 99 cent kind. Get something that has a nice thick heel and a good thick arch too. Have a couple more examples and if you're going to wear athletic shoes get something with a nice thick sole obviously and you can fit extra arch supports in there if you need to i have several different pairs and i just switch them out of whichever shoes i happen to be wearing at the time also i tend to wear thicker soled or high heeled shoes um, for people who have toe problems that's not always the best idea but for plantar fasciitis, it gets that heel up off the floor and lets your shoe absorb the shock instead of your foot. You can use tennis balls or dryer balls or bouncy balls. Put all of your weight on that and roll it back and forth. That helps to take some of the inflammation out. That's gonna be demonstrated in our next video. Also, if you're significantly overweight, that's probably contributing. And so losing weight can significantly help. I used to have plantar fasciitis then after I had my weight loss surgery and lost 100 plus pounds, my plantar fasciitis went away unless I walk around barefoot on my hardwood floors and then it comes roaring back and I have to put on my thinking cap and go back to the basics. The natural history of plantar fasciitis is that it resolves spontaneously, but it can take months or years for that to happen. So while we wait for it to hopefully resolve on its own, what are things that we can do from a medical standpoint? There are a lot of different therapies that are available. The main ones that we'll hit on are ones that have been shown to be effective. Injections in the plantar fascia. Let me assure you, this is not the most fun you would ever have having an injection in the bottom of your foot. However, 24 to 36 hours after the injection, when the medicine starts to help with the inflammation, they can be very helpful. Some people will wear night splints, which keeps your foot in the flexed position so that the fascia doesn't shorten. That allows it to heal. And those, sometimes I'm comfortable to try to sleep in, but they've been shown to have quite a bit of success with that. If you have a friendly neighborhood physical therapist or sports medicine doctor, they can show you how to tape to help support the plantar fascia or the arch of your foot. Anti-inflammatories can be of use. Oral anti-inflammatories we have to use with caution, especially in the long term, because of their risk of causing ulcers, potentially bleeding ulcers, and kidney function impairment. 
but they can be a useful add-on. Also, there are topical anti-inflammatories that come in patches or gels, and those can be a nice add-on. There's no evidence to support that, but anecdotally, I've had patients tell me that it gives them some relief, and since very little of it is absorbed into your system, they seem to be safe. Casting is similar to night splints that people can wear to help just rest that area and allow it to heal but that has fallen out of favor in the last several years just because we don't want people to lose their range of motion or muscle tone. Others have used dry needling, AKA acupuncture, or Botox to help, also with limited results, but some people get relief from it. So if it's effective, then great. Uh, in the most severe cases, there are different surgeries that can be performed, but for something that is likely to resolve, if you do your stretches and arch supports and other methods of improvement, that's usually reserved for last case scenario. So stay tuned for our next segment when we're gonna have our very first special guest help demonstrate some exercises for plantar fasciitis. Don't forget to like and subscribe.